Okay, so one of my YouTube viewers uh, recently sent me a few emails asking me a question about equilibrium. Um, you know, after looking closely at the question, I sort of decided that it would be easier for me to just make a movie of my answer than to email her back personally and type out the answer, because the answer, you know, typing the answer would take a long time. So, here's the answer. Enjoy. The question says, uh, we have an equilibrium setting where we have acetic acid and ethanol that are thrown into a bucket, and they're allowed to stir until they reach equilibrium. Now, the equilibrium product, by the way, for this reaction is ethyl acetate. It also says that in the problem. Now, just to sort of explain what's going on here, this is the structure of acetic acid, and this is the structure of ethanol. To be quite honest, it might be easier to see this if I draw the structure of ethanol backwards. So, ethanol looks like this. When these two things interact, what they essentially do is they trade partners. So this OH right here and this hydrogen right here get stuck together to form water, H2O. So I've got this hydrogen, this OH, stuck together, they become H2O. And then the rest of this molecule, this OCH2CH3, gets sort of uh, appended onto this carbon. So basically what happens is this hydrogen, oxygen, or uh, this hydrogen, OH, stick together and then this thing comes and uh, takes the place of, or, of the OH. So it's essentially a partner swap. Hopefully you're okay with that. Anyway, so the problem goes on to say that at uh, initiation, and we are going to use an ice table in this, there's um, a molar concentration, or sorry, one mole of this is thrown in, uh, or is added to one mole of this. And of course, at initiation, we're going to assume that there are zero moles of ethyl acetate and zero moles of water. Uh, it does not say, however, how many liters total of solution or if there's any other solvent added, so eh, that might sort of uh, throw a wrench in the works a little bit. Nevertheless, it says that at equilibrium, so, so obviously I throw one mole of this, one mole of this into a bucket, and they stir and stir and stir, and then at some moment in time, the stirring is done, and we've got some product formed, both the ethyl acetate and the water. Anyway, some amount of change has occurred. I've gotten some amounts of these reactants. Uh, converting into products, and so I've got like a minus x here and a minus x there, and then these are present in a one to one to one to one ratio, so I've got a plus x and a plus x as the degree of change or amount of change of these products. It tells me then in this problem that at equilibrium, once it hits equilibrium, the uh, amount of moles of H2O is 0.75, so there are 0.75 moles of H2O. And then it asks me to calculate the equilibrium rate constant. Now please keep in mind the equilibrium rate constant is going to be equal to the concentration of ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate, by the way, is, um, I'm just sort of shortening it by calling it C, because it's easier to write the letter C than it is to write out ethyl acetate. So the concentration of ethyl acetate divided by the concentrations of the reactants A and B, acetic acid and ethanol in this case, multiplied by each other. So anyway, I have to f figure out what the equilibrium concentrations are for each of these substances, throw those numbers in here, and then throw it in my calculator, and I should get the equilibrium rate constant. So here's sort of the nice, easy thing about this. If I have 0.75 moles of water at equilibrium, what is x? Well, x must have been 0.75, right? Because I started out with 0 moles of water, and I end up with 0.75 moles of water, at least from the information I've been given in this problem, that's what I'm assuming. So what that means is that I've got 0.75 for every single one of these. So I can easily fill in the equilibrium concentrations. 1 minus 0.75 is 0.25. 1 minus 0.75 is 0.25. And 0 plus 0.75 is 0.75. So I just throw, this is the equilibrium concentration or amount of C. This is the same for B and this is the same for A. I throw those into here, I get 0.75 divided by 0.25 times 0.25. Now I did that on my calculator earlier and the number that I ended up getting was 12. So that is the equilibrium rate constant for this reaction. Now the beautiful thing about that is that um, it tells me because that number is much larger than 1 that this is an equilibrium reaction that heavily favors products over reactants. Okay, now we have a follow-up question. It says that in a separate, so this is sort of the answer to part A or question A that the equilibrium constant comes out to be 12. I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. So I'll write the equilibrium constant equal to 12 because that will become relevant in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and erase this section right here so that we can go on to the second question. The second question says, uh, 
it says that in a totally uh, separate flask, I mix one mole of acetic acid, so I'll go ahead and write down one mole there, of acetic acid with one mole of ethanol and four moles of water. By the way, I neglected to mention that the reason that water is left out of the equilibrium expression is because it's a liquid. And we don't include liquids in equilibrium constant expressions. We only include things that are aqueous species. So, anyway, just thought I'd tell you that. Okay, so, um, in this question it says that I've got a mole, a mole, and then I've got four moles of this, and I'm throwing that in. Presumably we have zero moles of that. <clears throat> it then goes on to say that this thing is allowed to stir until it reaches equilibrium. And then it asks me to calculate the amount of ethyl acetate, so the amount here produced after it's reached equilibrium. So in other words, I'm trying to figure out what is that. Alright? So yeah, let's go ahead and do this. So once again, I'm going to get minus x here, minus x there, and plus x, and plus x over there. Oh, and by the way, um, the same viewer also asked the question, asked two other questions. One question is, um, when should we use ice tables and when should we not? Ice tables like this one are used when you've got an equilibrium reaction. An equilibrium reaction is when you have two arrows like that and you're given some amounts of reactants or, and products and you're asked to calculate the final amounts at equilibrium. This kind of arrow ice table is often where you're going to go. Maybe not necessarily always, it depends on the specific question, but that's usually an indicator that an ice table will very likely be something you'll be using, depending on the specific question. The next question that she asked was, she's confused as to whether or not we use a positive X or a negative X. The answer to that is we use negative X's for the reactants, we use positive X's for the products. And that's pretty much it, because generally speaking, we're going to have reactants that will disappear as the reaction moves forward, and we'll have products that appear as the reaction moves forward. Hopefully you're okay with that. Anyway, so I've got 1 minus X here, I've got 1 minus X here, and I've got 0 plus X right there. Interestingly enough, for, because the water does not directly participate in the equilibrium expression, so the equilibrium expression is of course the amount of ethyl acetate at equilibrium divided by A times B in the denominator, um, water does not factor into the equilibrium expression whatsoever because it's a liquid. So, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my equilibrium amounts. That's going to be X here for C. It's going to be 1 minus X for uh, both A and B. And then I'm going to have to figure out what x, or, uh, what x is. This is, of course, going to be equal to the equilibrium rate constant, which we solved in part A as being uh, negative 12, or sorry, as being 12. So I'm going to do some algebra here, and hopefully you're okay with this. I've got x in the numerator, and I've got 1, x, 1 minus x multiplied by 1 minus x. I can just call that 1 minus x squared and set that equal to 12. If I multiply both sides by 1 minus x squared, I've got x on one side, and I've got that equal to 12 multiplied by 1 minus x squared on the right side of the equation now. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do some uh, foiling, and hopefully you remember foil from, uh, from algebra. I don't know if I can... If you don't, I don't have any videos, unfortunately, on how to foil, but I, I'll, I can go ahead and write this thing out as 12 multiplied by 1 minus x times 1 minus x, I suppose. And let's see if we can foil this thing out. What I do is I take the 1 and I multiply it by a 1. So I'm going to go ahead and foil this thing out. I've got 1 times 1 is 1, and then I've got 1 times a negative x is negative x. And then I do the negative x times 1 is negative x, and then the negative x times a positive x is positive x squared. So that is all foiled out, and then I'm going to take the 12 multiplied by everything through, and I end up getting x here on the left side of the equation being equal to 12 minus... Uh, I guess this is a negative x minus an x, which is a negative 2x multiplied by 12 is a negative 24x. And I've got a positive x squared multiplied by 12 is plus 12x squared. Now, if I subtract x from both sides, I should get 0 on the left side, being equal to 12 minus a 25x plus 12x squared. Now, how do I solve from this point forward? Hmm. Well, you can reverse FOIL it if you wish, or if you wish, you can use the quadratic formula. Now, I'm not really a math professor, so I'm not going to show you how to do that, but I invite you to look it up on your own on the internet. But, when you uh, use the quadratic formula to be able to solve for x, you should, in theory, get two uh, potential solutions for x. Uh, which of those is the correct solution? The answer is whichever one is a positive number, because you can't have a negative concentration for your final ethyl acetate. And hopefully, there should only be one positive number. If you have two positive numbers, then 
one of them will be correct and the other one won't. I don't really know how to figure out which one. But anyway, hopefully there's only one positive uh, uh, answer for x and whatever one that is, that will be the correct answer.